Hi everybody, today I'm in Ville du Le Pont and I brought some items to be uh, re-tinned and re-polished, uh, some of which I brought at recent Rockhamps. So yeah, I love this, love this place, it's really, really nice. As you can see, it's still a busy high street really, you know, for the amount of shops that's still open here, but sadly over the last 20 to 30 years, a lot of the antique and copper shops have disappeared. There's still one or two up the main high street here, so yeah, it's good to support these uh, traditional shops. Here is the statue of Marianne, which is a symbol of the revolution. So I've just come out of Le Gautier, beautiful shop. It's got some real stunning pieces in there. I bought me polish from there. Um, it's amongst the best polish I've ever used. It's really, really good. This is a family business that's been going for many generations and still going strong now. Um, some lovely objects in there. So yeah, I always come out with a smile on my face. It's beautiful. Onwards and upwards to the next one. I think I may have rung the bell. <laughs> Bill Do is famous for its bell making and there's a foundry just around the corner. Beautiful, isn't it? This is the bell foundry at Bill Do. Um, it's a 19th century working workshop here. They still make uh, and cast the bells. As you can see by the gates and all the ornate work, they do some really stunning stuff. It's a company, Cornhill Pavard. World famous have I for their copper pieces, cookware and things like that. I have in previous times been here and had the tour around the workshop, uh, really fascinating and uh, maybe one day I'll come back and do the tour again and hopefully get some video in there. But I would imagine that the bell on the steps I've just shown you in front of the town hall around there was cast here so it hasn't travelled very far and as you can see there's several in the grounds here. Right, I'm just on the way to Atelier du Cuivre. It's just up here, so let's go and have a look. I'm at the workshop now. I'm just going to take these two items in here to be evaluated for polishing and retinning. This one was in a previous video where I mentioned I was going to get it retinned. The workshop here has been going hundreds of years and they're reputed to be some of the best workshops here, so they do a really good job on it. So yeah, you'll see the before and you'll see the after and you'll see the difference, it's really something else Unfortunately, they don't actually serve food, otherwise I'd really be in heaven. <laughs> but this is just a beautiful little display that they do. It's, uh, it's done really, really tastefully, it's lovely. So this lovely Colin Barge property here was actually the place where they'd done the tinning. It's long since deceased from doing that. Um, it's up for sale now. It's got beautiful stonework as you can see around the arch. And the stone archway takes you down into one of many of little courtyards that lead off of this street. There would have been little workshops and factories working sort of night and day. There would have been the smell of all the smelting and the, you know, the, the burning of wood and things like that. It would have been a real hive of activity here. So it's a little bit quieter nowadays, but there's still a bit of activity going on. Let's go and have a look. This archway here leads down to what they call the Monk's Courtyard. So I'm just going to have a walk down there and see what it's all about. As you can see, under here, it's a stone corbel sticking out the wall with a hole in here. That would have held a big wooden shaft that would have supported a big thick gate that would have shut here, an arched gate. So yeah, a real unusual feature that. And on the underside you can see all the original timbers, 
massive big oak beams and all the way down some lovely stonework hundreds of years old I went in there to the museum once as you can see down there is another archway leading into another courtyard down the bottom don't ask me what that is Lovely old brasserie there. Unfortunately, because of COVID, it's shut at the moment. Lovely exterior, stone stairway leading up. I would sum Vildu up in a few words. It's very pretty, very historic, and there's lots of copper here. So naturally, I like it. It's lively, there's lots happening. There's lots of energy still here. It's uh, a thriving community. Um, with a bit of history obviously so yeah they have a market held here every Tuesday um, they sell all local produce um, people grow stuff in their gardens and bring it here to sell so yeah real eclectic mix of stuff going on here when you press me, Oh my word, look at this. How about that for a planter? Shame it don't fit in my boot. So that's it for today in Vildu. Um, I've brought some lovely pieces to be refurbished and brought back into service. Some real unusual rare pieces there. Um, some of the pieces the lady hadn't seen before for quite some while. So yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to picking those up. So yeah, we're done today. Um, always a lovely visit here. And I've just spied a brocant on the way home, so maybe I'll be popping in there. So I couldn't resist, I had to go in there and I did find something very nice. This is probably 1880s, around that sort of period, all handfuls, cast iron. Well seasoned and well used. And there's a stamp on there that I can't make clear at the moment, but I shall uh, investigate that further and uh, those of you that watch Michael Peverick's video we cooked our lovely full English on a, a wood burning stove in one of these so let's in some action and let's cook some food and it will go on to cook some more so yeah lovely quite a rare piece bit of history in the making Hi there everybody, I'm at the retinners and I'm just about to pick the items up and they are looking great so I'll switch the camera. Wow, this looks really good. That's terrific. That's the caramel pan, very rare. This one is the, the Hillerin saute pan. Bonjour madame. Yeah. Looking stunning. It's one of the Marmite pots. It's with the rooster motif. Beautiful tin interior. Wow, look at that. Lovely large Marmite pot. The one with the dog bone handle. And also stunning tin interior. And the star of the show is this one. Fantastic Marmite pot. Soup pot with a lid. It's original lid. Unusual shape. Now she'll go into greater detail on my arrival home. So I'm just heading back in there now. I'm going to have a look around the store and hopefully get some shots of the products that they make and the commissions and bits and pieces like that. So hopefully it'll make It'll make good viewing. See you soon. So I'm back in the shop now. I'm just gonna have a look around and show you some of the amazing things they do here. This is the trade counter. 
where they take your order. The workshop is just up the stairs there. All the coppersmiths, tinners and everybody like that works. And then you've got some little souvenir pieces down here. Cups. And little items down here. Some really unusual things here. I say they're world renowned for their pieces. They pride themselves on the craftsmanship and they've got quite a unique process when it comes to the riveting on the handle and the inside of the pans. A lot of their products, the inside is smooth, you don't see any rivets which is quite unusual. It's a bit like their trademark. So yes, we've got a large roasting pan there. Turbotier, just here, beautiful. Jam pans, frying pans, Wayne Marie's. Lovely series of pots there with a, a beautiful hanger. Curios like these, I'm not sure what that is. Very heavy. I'll have to investigate that one. So yeah, jam pots. Once you've made the jam, the frying pans, and this is what I mean about the internal riveting. I don't know whether you can see clearly. It's in plastic, but there's no evidence of raised rivets, which is quite unique. They do a stainless steel range as well, interiors. This looks quite interesting, I've not seen that before. It looks like one of the coppersmiths that works here has stamped that one. I'll have to start collecting that. Some lovely kettles, cool de pools. <laughs> right, I'm just going upstairs now, there's some exhibition pieces up here. I've not been up here for quite a while. Well, that's unusual. Looks like a, a replica of a, a steel that comes around and does the Calvados. I've actually seen one of these in operation. My neighbor used to have one visit him. And uh, that's where they distill the Calvados. Some more souvenir pieces here. That's the visiting area at the back, which is close to the public at the moment. Wow, these are interesting. Maybe silver or pewter. Mixing bowl, sink. Lovely large mirror. This looks nice, unusual. There's one in brass. Piece for a church. I believe this is pewter, tankards, pictures. Now this is quite an unusual piece. It's copper and brass. Shape of a, a, a bag really, like a Gladstone bag. And I think it's for magazines. I've actually seen one of these recently so I may go back and purchase it. There we go. Not quite sure what this one is. You've got your wine and your champagne buckets. And you've got your water storage. Um, the name will come to me in a moment. Some more commissioned pieces, sinks large jugs it's like an umbrella stand this one here is a can uh, typical of this area in Normandy they carry the milk about another large piece here very very beautiful another large piece 
And an antique pot here. I'm just trying to look at the stamp mark. It says Vildu, Muviel. Very good make. And just a pan round and show you the rest of the shop from up above. Beautiful. So I've now got privileged access into the workshop area. They've kindly let me have a look round, so this is a real, real treat. In we go. Oh well guys, look at this. Oh, I'm in heaven. 